Okay, in this short video, I'd like to show you how you can get your own artwork, whether it's a sketch, a hand drawing, or even a photograph, into your game. And I'd like to show you how it could be used in two different ways, although there are many. I'll do one where the art is just in the background, it's just scenery, and then another one where we take a drawing and we actually put it on a component. And I'm going to show you that because I think sometimes a component in the game has some functionality, like it's a collectible that can be grabbed by the player. And we don't want to break any of that, we just want to change the image. And so I'll walk through a few uh, steps in Godot just to make sure that that can work. So I have one image here that I hand drew that is just an acorn. You can see my sketch there. So I photographed that and sent it to myself through email. And then I removed the background using this free background removal website. It's just remove.bg. So then I took these two images, this one and this one here, which I drew using another amazing tool that I'd like to recommend called Krita, K-R-I-T-A. This is a free open source art tool that's very, very powerful and can do all kinds of things for your art, much more than my simple tree here. So the first step, if you want to add any file to your project, in this case, a photo, all you have to do is drag and drop it into a folder. So I have the file system down here on the bottom left of Godot. I've selected assets because that's where I want the file to go. And then I can just drag and drop any image I'd like into that folder and it will appear in the list. Okay, so next let's tackle the background scenery one. I'm going to take my freehand tree here that I have in my assets. I'm going to click and drag it onto my screen. But notice here it gets in the way of some of the other objects that you actually do interact with. When you click on the tree in the viewport, you also highlight freehand tree, this node right here. One thing that's interesting about that scene tree is the further down in the list I put something like a tree, the more in the foreground it is visually in your game. So in this case, I'm going to click on the tree and move it all the way up to the top, which visually will make it seem like it's in the background. So you can see the coins in the platform. The second one, the acorn, I was thinking of using that to replace a coin. This is a little trickier because that coin is something that the player can collect. So I don't want to mess with any of the code or scripting that comes with this coin. And also, one other very important thing right now is this coin, even though it looks like it's a separate item from the other coins, it actually shares some resources in the game. All of these coins share the same collision shape and the same uh, Sprite 2D node. So we need to find a way to bring in the acorn, but not have it mess with any of the other coins, for example. I'm just going to do one here. And let's say I go over to the texture in the inspector. I can see that it's the coin that we have on the screen. And I click the down arrow, and you see this quick load button. And what that does is, whatever that um, item is, in this case a texture, it's going to be smart and know that it, it I only want to look for pictures. I don't want to look through the whole file system. I just want to look for all the pictures we have. And here's my acorn. But notice when I select acorn, it, it replaces the texture, but it's too big for that, for that collision shape. Um, the problem is, if I just make this picture smaller, or if I make this collision shape bigger, what it's going to do is do that to all the other coins that share those two resources. So I have to find a way to separate this one that I wanted to change from the others. So over in the scene tree, I've got highlighted coin number two. That's this coin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that coin number two in the scene tree, and I'm going to select editable children, and I'm going to make sure that's checked off. And then if I hit this little drop down, yours might just pop out. If I hit this little drop down, I can now see these two nodes that belong to that coin. One's the sprite node for the image and the other's the collision shape. So I'm going to click on the sprite 2D node and I'm going to go over to the inspector and hit the down arrow and I'm going to select something called make unique. It's going to separate that image from the shared resource of all the other coins. So now that I've selected that, I should be able to resize this acorn and better match the collision shape that comes with the coins so that it actually feels correct when the player goes and grabs it. They're the same size. But just to demonstrate quickly again here, if I were to have changed that without also making the collision shape unique, watch what happens to all the collision shapes. And let's run the game. And there's the coin, and I should be able to grab that acorn now.
Nice. So the other way that you could build a component with your own image is to start from scratch. To build a new scene like this here on the screen is a coin scene. It, it has a parent node. In this case, it's a specific type called coin, but you could do, it depends on what you're building. It has its own sprite shape, um, node and a collision shape. Okay, and just a final thought or two and a tip as we close this out. I have images here on the screen, uh, three, that uh, two of which I hand drew, but using different tools. This one was Krita online. This one was hand drawn and then I photographed. And then this actually, this third one, I didn't draw. That's an AI generated acorn. Um, I put them all on the screen together here because while I'm showing you different ways you can make art and get your art into the game, you want to be careful that the style and look of them is actually consistent. So the most obvious example is the AI generated acorn, but even the two hand-drawn ones look different because I use different tools to create them. This is something I never would have discovered on my own. Someone had to show me this, but if you have an asset or a piece of art that you've brought into your game and you look at the art and it looks blurry on the viewport as you zoom in like this knight does, if you click on that asset and you go over to your inspector and you look in canvas item down where it says texture, this filter option here, change this from inherent to nearest and look at the difference in the sharpness of the artwork. So try to remember that as you bring things in, have a little look and see if they have that blurry look like this and they need that to be switched so that it sharpens the image pretty significantly. It looks a lot better now. You can also explore tools that use a simpler style of art like this Piskel app that I have on the screen. This is a free and open source app that lets you generate pixel art. So, and you can export this and put it in your game. And even this bird, I struggled to make the pixel art. So at first I traced, I had an AI image generated and I used that to uh, help me trace and get my own bird on the screen. So there are all kinds of ways to help yourself get started and, and start small and simple, and then be able to get those things into your game.